Hey students, this is lesson 1.4b, fitting data, fitting lines to data. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take some data that um, that we think should probably have a certain linear type relationship and see if we can't come up with an equation to represent that data. All right, so um, check out this first problem here. It says students in a science class were measuring how far a car traveled each time the wheels rotated once. They measured the distance for one rotation, two rotations, three rotations, and so on. The wheels of the cart are two and a half feet in circumference. Would you expect the student's data to lie on a line? Now, you would think so because if one circumference is two and a half, two circumferences should be five, three should be seven and a half, and so on. So, so that data seems like it should be linear, but as you can see from the graph, when the students actually measured them in real life they didn't get exactly to didn't get it to go up by exactly two and a half feet per time so um but if you look at this data you'll notice that there is a trend in this data and it seems to be going up in a line so to speak and what we can attempt to do is to try and make a line fit that data and then we can actually use that line to make predictions about that data. That's called a trend line. When you just put in a line to represent the trend in a data. Okay. Now there's also some ways we can make that line actually fit better. Um, we can use technology. Um, we can come up with a better line than just uh, putting it in a line by eyeballing it like I just did. So. We're going to look at a problem here. It says, uh, in this problem, it says breaths per minute and heartbeats per minute were measured for 16 people after they had each walked for 20 minutes. The data are in the table. So here's the data. Now, what you should expect is that as, as people walk, um, well, there should be some sort of relationship between the number of breaths per minute they have and the number of heartbeats per minute. In other words, if they have more heartbeats, they should have more breaths and uh, we should see that trend all right so we're gonna we're gonna graph all that data and if you go to the next page you'll know it's already graphed for you and what we're gonna do is just draw a straight line in this data so you should probably grab something that's straight and then maybe pencil this in but i'm gonna draw in a line that i think represents this data when i first put in the line i just want to try and get the same slope and then what i'm going to do is move my line up and down Till it kind of looks like I got about half the data above the line and half the data below the line. Now, if I want to use this line to make predictions, like maybe I want to make a prediction about some data right in maybe there, um, what I need to do is come up with an equation for this line. Now, one way I can come up with an equation for this line is I could just pick two points on the line. We now know how to find equations when we have two points. And I can see that point right there is right on the line. And then the next closest point to the line is like maybe this one. Okay, so if I use those two points to create an equation, um, that equation will be close to this line, and then I can use that equation to make predictions. Well, the two points I just picked are uh, 15. I'm going to go back to the table here. I picked the last point, which was this one here, 44, 120. And the other one, I think, was this one right here, 1659. So 1659 and 44, 120 are the two points I'm going to use. And we know how to write an equation when we're given data like this. First thing we do is find the slope. And that would be 120 minus 59 over 44 minus 16, which equals 61 over 28. I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. That's about 2.18. I have to round that a little bit. So that's my slope. So now I'm my slope, so my equation is going to be y equals 2.18x plus something. 
then I'm just going to use one of these pieces of data to get the rest of it. Y has to be 120 when X is 44. So I'm going to multiply 2.18 times 44 to figure out my Y intercept. And that's 24.08. Okay, I now have an equation to represent that line. Um, and what I did, I, I, I pretty much am just estimating from my own eyes what I think that line should be. Um, one way we could improve the fit of that line is to use the means of the data. In other words, find the averages. Yeah, that's kind of what we think about that. Uh, so a better way to do that is to use our calculator to come up with that equation. Um, so, so I'm going to say, and when we do that, we call that the line of best fit when we use some method. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to show you how to use your calculator to do this. So, um, so we're going to take our calculator, and what we're going to do is put our data in this cal on a calculator. We press stat and then enter. I'll show you how to do this more in class. So my L1 here is going to represent the breaths per minute. And that's the first couple are like 16, 16. And then to put the um, heartbeats per minute, you just arrow over and you put in the heartbeats. I'm going to go ahead and do all of these and get, come back to you. Okay, so I put all the data in my calculator, and now I'm going to do a couple of things. Now, the things that I do will be written on the back of that formula sheet, so you can, you can use that as a reference. But um, first thing I'm going to do is make a scatter plot of this. So I'm going to press second Y equal. I'm going to press enter and turn my plot on. Then I'm going to go to zoom and down it's down at number 9 I believe it is. It's zoom stat is what I want. What that's going to do is is make it so my data fits on the screen. So zoom that you can just press number nine so now we can see that screen and when I did this I see that I had one point um, that you can see this one here that one there's something wrong with that point right there so I gotta fix that all right I fixed that point now you can see the data and this is pretty much the same as it is in your packet um, the next thing I want to do is create an, an equation for this the way you do that on your calculator is you press stat, calc, and then down here it says linear regression. And what that means is you're going to make a line, an equation of a line. Notice the form it says here, ax plus b. Um, that's our slope-intercept form. So I'm going to press enter there. Um, most of your calculators, you can just press enter at this point, but I have to go down to calculate. But notice that it gave me... A, which is my slope, and B, which is my y-intercept. Now I'm just going to round this to 2.2 and this to 22.4. So my equation, according to this, is y equals 2.2x plus 22.4. I believe that's what it is. I better check that again just to make sure. Yep, 22.4. Uh, and now I have an equation that the calculator actually figured out, took all that data and averaged it out for me. Um, now I'm going to go down here and use my equation to make a prediction. Um, it says here, we want to know, we want to predict the heart rate for a person who takes 35 breaths per minute. Well, breaths per minute are my x, so I'm just going to do 2.2 times 35 plus 22.4. And I'm just going to calculate that, and that's going to be my prediction there. Um, and then the second one says, use your equation to predict uh, the heart rate for a person 
who takes 100 breaths per minute. And to find that out, I would just take 2.2 times 100 plus 22.4. And that equation, um, the calculator generated by averaging all the data, so that's why it's called the line of best fit, it isn't just a guess by me. It's actually a mathematical algorithm taking care of that for you. All right, well, that's it. Um, we'll talk about this more in class and show you how to do that.